Sweet. Yeah, what do you think? Deacon 76. Deacon 76, brand new this year. 76 underfoot, as the numbers say. Got a little tip rocker, little tail rocker. So it's a kind of a beefed up G, you know, GS Carver. Two sheets of metal, sheet of wood, vibration absorption in the front. Uh, you know, that tip rocker makes it pretty accessible to start the turn. The tail is pretty stiff, as you can see by some of my turns. I, full disclaimer, do not have a racing background, but these are a ton of fun. Uh, perfect Deacon day. We got some pretty good setup corduroy here, but very edgeable. Um, yeah, just a perfect, great all around groomer ski, beer league GS ski, you know, if you're doing citizens races. Um, if you're an X racer looking for something a little wider, a little more stable, uh, they're pretty sweet. So, you know, a normal race ski is a lot narrower. You're going to feel like you're on an ice skate. The 76 is a little wider, so you get more of a stable platform to stand on. Uh, so that gives you more stability uh, for these upper end recreational skiers, X racers, but definitely a ton of fun and uh, very fast. Hey, you look like you're enjoying yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. And I'm Bob, how are you? Uh, we've got a pretty cool review for you today. Um, this is the Deacon 76 from Vogel. Um, and, and we're gonna kind of continue the review here in our studio. Uh, you saw Bob taking some turns on it there. We're gonna show you some more skiing footage of Bob um, throughout the review. Um, let's recap its construction and kind of where it sits in the line. Uh, Bob replaced the the, the code yep. collection. Yeah, and this one, the code L specifically. Yep. Um, so fairly similar skis, but there are some changes to it. Um, it's a wood core. It's that kind of classic vocal multi-layer wood core. Um, then they use two sheets of metal, two sheets of titanal metal, just like a race ski. Um, vertical sidewalls throughout the whole ski. Um, and then they also use their, their 3D glass construction technique, which they kind of first introduced in their 3D ridge skis, like the RTM series, the 98, the 108, that kind of stuff. Um, but essentially the, the fiberglass kind of wraps further around the ski. Um, so it comes vertically up along the edges of the ski, which, which definitely seems to help with overall stability and, and just the amount of power that you're transmitting to your edge. Um, so, Bob, yeah, you skied these quite a bit. Uh, we skied them last year too, so we have quite a bit of experience on these guys now. Um, you may have remembered last year there was kind of a, a hidden top sheet. Vocal put like a special top sheet on it for testing so no one really knew what it was. You may have seen us skiing on it then. Um, but, Bob, would I be right um, if I ventured a guess that you're normally on a ski that's wider than this? Yeah, 76 certainly seems pretty narrow these days. Yeah. Um, and you know, even for a frontside ski, it's on the narrow side. Yeah. Um, but the power that you get from that narrow waist uh, is just incredible. Um, but even so, it's a little it's a little wider than your you know than your World Cup race ski. So even though it's built like that World Cup ski, it's got a little more width so that more people can enjoy it, not just World Cup athletes. Yeah. Yeah, even even like on a groomer day, sometimes the groomer has like a couple inches of give to it. Right. And a ski like this, um, and you also mentioned tip and tail rocker. Yeah. Um, you know, it's fairly subtle, but you can actually see it. We'll do kind of some some close ups so you guys can can see it a little easier. Um, but I think that also helps in in kind of softer snow conditions. Yep. Uh, definitely for that GS carver with that longer turn radius, it really helps start that turn. Um, it doesn't just yank you into it like a full cambered ski does. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so again, kind of the the idea that this is going to be that GS Carver for a wider audience. Yeah. Uh, for a bigger group of skiers, uh, that tip and tail rocker. Yeah, it's very subtle, but it you can tell, um, especially if you have any experience skiing on fully cambered skis. Uh, you know that the tip and tail being able to ease in and out of the turn is very helpful uh, but that being said it's it's all there 
you know, from yeah, from here to the bottom, uh, it's all there. So you can just lean right into it, and it pulls you right around. Pretty yeah, fun. like it doesn't feel like you lose any torsional stiffness or edge grip or, yeah. or just power in general because of that tip and tail rocker. Uh, just makes it a little bit more user friendly, I'd say. Yeah, like that. That kind of cheater GS ski, the the GS ski with more of a 20-ish meter turn radius. They're, that type of ski is in pretty high demand. Um, this is a 19.4 meter turn radius, so pretty much right there. What what most people are kind of looking for in that GS ski type ski that yeah. doesn't actually meet FIS standards. Um, you brought up beer league racing. Yeah, beer league racing that'd be a great option. Yeah, yeah, I mean when I was beer league racing, I was kind of constantly on the lookout for a ski with that kind of that right turn radius to to get a a leg up on the competition and yeah. if this was available when I was beer league racing I would have been psyched and, and definitely would have been would have been skiing on one I think um as a carving ski um I was kind of watching you release your tail edge a little bit every once in a while and kind of make some more shorter pivoting yep. turns um, you think the tail rocker helps a little bit with that? Definitely. You can, you know, even though it's 20 meters uh, on that radius, you can definitely shorten your turns up. Yeah. So, you know, sticking to the side of the trail or right down the middle, just, you know, it's a, it's a versatile radius. So you can make whatever type of shape turns you want. Uh, but that being said, it likes to be, likes yeah. to be held throughout that radius it is nice to have that ability though to release the tail edge yeah. you know say you're skiing on a weekend and the trails are pretty crowded and all you want to do is, is link high speed carving turns sometimes there's just so much steer yeah. traffic on the trail that you can't do that yeah. and you have to kind of release that tail edge and, and dump some speed here and there or maneuver quickly when you don't expect it when somebody cuts across your line or, yeah. or something like that um, i think we even experienced some of that the other day when, when we were on it, the trails oh, yeah. were, were pretty crowded and you were kind of maneuvering through some people. Yeah. I w was too, doing my best to not run into people <laughs> while I was holding a camera. Um, but yeah, I think it's a, just to kind of summarize, I think it's a great addition to the vocal line. Um, they have the RTM collection, which is also kind of focused on firm snow carving performance, but those skis feel different and they're wider. Yeah. Um, to me, this is a more precise, more firm snow, really focused ski. Um, really feels like a race ski, don't you think? Yeah, and you know, when we were out on it the other day, the snow was pretty soft. Yeah. You know, it was groomed and flat, but it was soft. Uh, you know, I'd like to take it out again on some firmer snow and, um, you know, see how it does again on that on a hard pack day. Yeah, on a real boiler plate yeah. day. I bet it would do just fine. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's gonna lack any any yeah. edge grip. Um, you'd have to be a pretty darn aggressive skier to really push it past its limits. I don't really expect anybody yeah. would, unless unless Ted Liggety happens to be watching this video. Um, in which case, that might be an exception. But yeah. no, I think it's it's if you're looking for a ripping frontside powerful ski, um, you have it here in the Deacon seventy six. Um, anything to add, Bob? Uh, just that this is a nice system binding too. Yeah, that's true. Um, yep. It's a basically a race XL 12 um, on a worm screw track. Uh, some other bindings, you'll, you'll get some play. Uh, some system bindings, you get some play in the toe and the heel, and this is just a very direct connection. Yeah. So you are, you know, don't think of it as this system ski as less than, you know, a drill mount to a plate. Um, it's a really bomber system. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that is I think it's one of the best out there they do offer it um, with a with a plate that you would drill a binding into that they call it the Deacon 76 Pro but yeah like you said I think this binding is is really impressive yeah. and I, yeah, I don't feel like you lose any performance um, so maybe you're just that type of guy that really likes to kind of pick and choose your bindings and you want to pick a specific binding to drill into a plate there is that option um, but I think this is gonna work for for most people so, yeah, we'll leave it there. That's the Deacon 76. Uh, like Bob said, we'll, we'll continue skiing it throughout the year, take it out on some, on some real boilerplate days, and if anything changes, we'll let you know, but we don't expect anything to change. Nope. And it's dumping snow right now in Stowe. It's insane. This is one of the best Novembers we can remember. 
Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll keep getting out there and testing skis, and we'll see you on the slopes. Bye.